The Devil's Hands Are Idle Playthings Fry wants to impress Leela, and he once again takes up the holophoner, which is apparently a more commonly played instrument than we previously thought. A holophoner? Only a few people in the whole universe can play that. And they're not very good at it. And apparently they're all children in New New York. Wow. Your kid is great. How hard did you say you had to hit him? Fairly hard. I guess these kids could only get here through whiplash techniques. Unfortunately, Fry is not up to snuff, so he and Bender go and get help from the star of the show's first big musical number. I'll merely pick a robot at random from somewhere in the universe, probably one you've never even met, and then I'll remove his hands and switch them for yours. And in an uncharacteristically lucky moment, Fry gets the better end of a Faustian bargain. At last I have the power to make Leela love me. Oh, sorry, that'll wear off in a couple of days. I can't believe a Matt Groening character voiced by Dan Castellaneta would be inclined to strangling. Who is this one-eyed female baby Moses? With courage in her female baby smile. Look, as far as I'm concerned, every TV show would be better if it was a musical, so I really appreciate such an operatic climax to this episode. You guys should consider what Disney does and, and, and actually mount this on stage in Broadway. Hey, Disney owns you now, so what's stopping them? At least they could put it up at the Hyperion. I can't imagine that one drawing of Bender at Krusty Burger gave Universal full control over the Futurama theme park rights. Oh, but it's not as crowded as the slave labor camps at Universal Studios. At the time this episode was being written, the fate of Futurama was up in the air, but the staff all had a sinking feeling that this would probably be the last one. Did we think this might be the last episode of the series when we wrote it? And the answer is, we did, yes. We thought we thought there was a, probably about a 50-50 chance, so we kind of wanted to hedge our bets and not have everyone literally wave goodbye at the end, but to, to at least go out on a sweet note that you would, you would feel good about yourself. And considering they weren't 100% sure that it was the finale, it's remarkable how beloved a finale it is. And I think it all comes back to that final line. Please don't stop playing, Fry. I want to hear how it ends. A final line that they had to spend a lot of time to get just right. It took about six months for us to record the very last line of this show and the last line of the series. So literally for, for months and months, there was one line of the series that needed to be recorded. But uh, due to Fox's tremendous delays in airing the show, it proved to not be any sort of a problem at all. But here's my hot take. As much as I love this episode, I don't think this is even the best finale from this season. See, the thing I really remember sticking with me when I watched through the Volume 4 DVD set was that there are a lot of episodes that have really emotional or uplifting or finale-feeling endings. You're my parents. All I've ever wanted is to know you. <laughs> this is the happiest moment of my life. I don't care if you're not the most important person in the universe. It really makes me happy to see you right now. Then I am the most important person in the universe. So, um, Leela, seeing how the universe wasn't destroyed, you want to catch an ape fight? You know, together? Well, I guess you deserve one more flip. So, heads or tails? You know, let's just say it's heads. And the staff knew that Fox had a habit of airing episodes out of order, so I feel like they wrote a lot of these episodes to be potentially conclusive just in case any one of them was the last episode ever shown. Boy, thank God they didn't air Jurassic Bark last. But if you ask me, the episode in the season that would have made the best finale? The Sting. For all we know, they could air this episode last and people would actually think that it was uh, the final episode. We could just cut out the special, the, you know, the twist ending and let, yeah, <laughs> just let Fry die. Let Fry be dead. In The Sting, Leela blames herself for Fry's death by Space Bee, but when she seems to be receiving messages from Fry, she wants to find out if he's still alive somewhere or if she's just going crazy. It's an episode with an incredible scope, surreal moments, and the sweetest ending. More importantly, for me, in the entire 
entire run of the Fry Leela relationship, this is the one episode that made me believe that Leela would start to fall in love with Fry too. Out of all the episodes in this season, this is the one that I think would have made the most satisfying finale. But it didn't end up being the final season anyway, so it's a moot point.